Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's game plan. How you guys doing? Uh, my name is Gareth Soloway here at Verified Investing. I know some of you guys weren't a huge fan of my soccer skills slash football skills yesterday. We'll see what we can do with the basketball today. All right, we're going to get right into it. So follow me over here. First and foremost, take a look. We know that this is being given away one week from tomorrow. One week from tomorrow, one of you guys that follows Verified Investing on Twitter or YouTube will get this 100-ounce bar of silver worth about $2,500. And check this out, guys. We just got this in. This is the new wheel, the verified wheel here. And again, we will have prizes, literally gold, silver, Bitcoin, Solana, Ether, um, courses, you name it, all that stuff. And every day, I'm going to be spinning that so you guys can obviously win some more stuff. So my goal here, by the way, is to to give back. You guys support me by watching me every day and supporting me in so many ways. I want to give back. And that's what this is all about, guys. All right. Okay, right into the charts we go, or right into the data we go. Let's jump over here. We have our market blast today. Guys, today is the day. NVIDIA earnings, right? So again, NVIDIA earnings, this is the basically the end game. This would be the final countdown between the bulls and the bears, right? So the bulls have seen a market that has continued to hit new all-time highs. They'll argue that the economy is unbelievably strong, that it's going to continue to have this perfect landing, that the Fed can lower interest rates at any point and just juice the economy. They may be right. The bears would say it's been a very thin rally where more and more sectors are being left out. And obviously just a few stocks have led us to new all time highs. The key is going to be 420 today, 420 today, guys. That is when this comes out. This news today, I will do my best to cover it here. All right. Remember, S&P 500, we've talked about the levels here. So yesterday I was showing you that chart. We'll go over it in just one second. But you're at a pivotal level on the S&P. The NASDAQ 100 is actually broken down outside of the wedge pattern. So we're going to go over that. Palo Alto Networks, take a look at this right here. Palo Alto slammed, I think it's down something like 22% right now. This is a, this was a $115 billion company yesterday, trading at all-time highs or just off all-time highs. It shows you the risks here, right? We saw SMCI going crazy to the upside. That got crushed. Now Palo Alto on earnings. And the kicker here is that it's taking down the whole sector. FTNT, CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike's down 10% this morning on the back of this Palo Alto news. All right, continuing down, guys, Solar Edge. Now, Solar Edge is kind of interesting because it is down huge, I think about 16%. But the kicker here is that the, the, what they're saying is that their revenue is going to slow down. Essentially, their guidance is light. But the kicker here is that they're talking about how the the high interest rates are causing people to step away from solar. Now, you, say, you might say, well, why is that the case? And the, and the answer is very simple, is most residential solar people that are adopting solar, putting it on their roof, they're financing it. And when you have interest rates higher, what happens? People can't afford those payments, just like new homes, just like lots of other things. So again, that is calling, it's causing solar edge to fall. They're also laying off 16% of the workforce. I really try to make that clear every day in these games plans. I want you guys to hear who's laying off because I do think there's a trend here that's pretty obvious and I do think the end game means recession. Teladoc, again, this is kind of an on online health or, or, or call in health type thing. 20% drop on earnings. Now the kicker here is while this is not a big company, it's only $3 billion market cap. The kicker is I was going into this and I said, you know what? I wonder if Teladoc earnings could be good because everyone's calling up to get these weight loss drugs, right? They don't want to go see the doctor. They just want to call up, get a, get a telehealth appointment and say, hey, you know, put me on Ozempic or whatever it is. And so I'm curious if Eli Lilly starts to correct here. We did see Eli Lilly down yesterday, and today it's down another $15. But this is very interesting for the overall demand that we'll hear from Eli Lilly when they report. Last couple tidbits here. Fed minutes today. It's kind of like the most insignificant of news, even though you'd think like, oh, the Fed minutes from the last meeting, this is going to be big. But today, when you have all of this other things going on, NVIDIA earnings, this becomes somewhat minor. But keep an eye on it in case we get any nuggets of information from the FOMC, the Federal Reserve. Lastly, guys, you guys know I've talked about nat gas. I've said I'm long nat gas. It was into major support. We had the measured move. We had all these technicals. What's going on today? Up 12% at least last I checked. I think it might even be up more right now. But again, huge move from yesterday's lows. And again, I'm going to show you that chart in just one second. All right. So let's get into some chart action. Let's go quickly into some of this stuff here, guys. 
This is the S&P 500 or the spiders. This is what I'm talking about. It's amazing how the markets come into these levels, guys. It's amazing how going into significant news like NVIDIA earnings that will literally, you know, basically you're going to have bulls claiming victory if NVIDIA surges on earnings, bears claiming victory if it collapses. But again, look at the S&P. It's literally at this pivot point where you have to wonder. It's still right on that line. Is it going to do this tomorrow on NVIDIA earnings? Or is it going to go like this and try to break to the upside? So again, major pivotal level on the S&P 500. If we flip over to the NASDAQ 100, this is a little trickier. Because if you look at the NASDAQ 100, it is actually broken already. We take a look down here, right? And let me just bring up my trend drawing tools again. But if we look at these levels, we have now seen a breakdown on the NASDAQ 100. So again, very clear, it's closed below. Now, it hasn't confirmed, so that's the kicker. Maybe it doesn't confirm. Maybe they, the bulls can save the day with a phenomenal NVIDIA report. But we're going to watch this today again. Do we confirm on the NVIDIA earnings, or do they get us back up and try to break out above this kind of double top high pivot here? All right, so just to be clear on NVIDIA's earnings, I want everyone to understand the earnings are going to be phenomenal. That's not in question. They probably beat by a mile. Now, most people would say, oh, well, shouldn't the stock go up? It's not about that. It's about guidance. It's about margins. And ultimately, it's about valuation. All right, so again, guidance and margins are going to be the most important. Are we seeing more competitors entering the market, and are their margins falling? Because if their margins are falling, then you have to start saying, okay, well, what are their futures earnings? What's their revenue growth in the future? What will they be able to make? And that's the problem here. So watch that guidance. Guidance and margins will be key for NVIDIA. All right, speaking of NVIDIA, I do want to jump into this chart real quick. I think this is a pretty cool chart. This is a channel. I'm a big fan of my channels, guys. And what we could see on this chart is looking at NVIDIA, there's actually this channel high here that we actually just hit. So if we take this high, connect it right to the recent highs, you have this little pivot here and here. Now, again, it doesn't mean that this is a top on NVIDIA. I honestly couldn't tell you. I think it's overdone. I think it's a little ridiculous. I've mirrored this with the Cisco chart from the dot-com era. Lots of things like that don't mesh. They don't make sense. So again, the idea is eventually this comes down, but you don't know. Timing-wise, frankly, I would have thought over here it was overdone. Over here it was overdone. Lots of levels prior looked overdone, and it kept on powering to the upside. So the longer term, yes, it does eventually collapse back down as these chips get, get commoditized, but in the short term, these earnings will do a lot to tell us. Now again, we are seeing it yesterday having a big down day. I thought this was ridiculous, guys. Yesterday, it lost $70 billion in market cap, which was the biggest drop. It was the biggest drop since October of last year, which is ridiculous because it was only down like 4%. And then it was the biggest market cap loss for the stock ever. Think about that. I mean, you know, it, it almost doesn't even com compute to me that that could be the case, that a 4% drop is the biggest drop. It just tells you what a bull market move this thing has been in for such a long period of time. Now, speaking of bull markets, I want to look at this SMCI chart, guys. I want to do a quick little educational lesson here. I always try to throw a little education in. And one of the things that I've learned over time is when you get these massive reversals, oftentimes you're not just talking about a short-term high, but you're talking about a long-term high. And you might say, well, how do you know that? Or why is that the higher probability scenario? And I'm going to explain right now the thought process. So as SMCI was going up, 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 consistently up every single day, just grinding it out, it caught a lot of people that were just saying, you know what, this looks like easy money. It never goes down. I'm going to just keep buying and buying and buying and never look back. All right. So there was this mentality that you couldn't lose. It was like a rigged you know, game, if you will. And they could just make money all the way up. The problem is, is when you get a reversal like this, reality comes back in. And there was so much. If you look at the volume in these days, there was a massive amount of volume. And in one day, people thought that, that were buying, that had bought over the previous, let's say, three days, they went from thinking it was a no-lose scenario, I will make money, this is the easiest trade in the book, to holy cow, reality does exist, this can actually come back in. And what that does, folks, it makes everyone who bought up in this range, as price, if price bounces up, there are going to be people that got crushed. I mean, think about someone that bought this, more, this day on this drop at 1077. 
All right, that person is praying price gets up here so that they can sell into that and just break even after losing 30% in one day. And there's a ton of people in volume all along here that are saying, oh my gosh, I thought this was a no-brainer investment. I thought I couldn't lose. And now in one day, holy cow, I'm now scared. They are all sellers, right? They're all looking to get their money back and unload. And that what that does is it creates a massive area of sell side action if price tries to, it, to violate and go back up to those highs. And that's why you see a lot of these tops. To be honest, Bitcoin, same thing. When you hit 69,000 and you had the big flush, there's a lot of people that have been stuck in that that will sell. Now, a lot of people are maxis and they won't, but there are still traders that got in for the wrong reasons. And that's the key, right? It's what is the reason? Are you investing because it has sound fundamentals? Are you investing because it makes sense? The technicals are telling you, or are you just chasing because it's a meme stock and everyone else is buying and it, you think it's gonna go up even though there's nothing behind it? Those are the people that will be eager to sell as, as it gets up here. So just a little bit of an educational a lesson on why reversals like that tend to hold for long periods of time. Again, I'm not necessarily going to guarantee anything. Nothing's guaranteed in the markets. But in general, these type of reversals after such a mega run will be long-term tops, meaning not just a month top, but potentially a multi-year top. A right, couple other charts here, guys on the morning session. We got to touch on Palo Alto Networks here. Palo Alto just continues to go lower. Look at this drop. I mean, this is an incredible after hours and this morning move down to 275 after yesterday closing around 370 or so or 366. Um, unbelievable considering it, it was a $115 billion market cap now trading at probably around $90 billion give or take. Now where is the level to trade this? Let's talk levels here. So we know it's around that 275 level and what we do is we bring up this chart and we start saying okay well where do we have to go down to to find a major pivot and we have to zoom out a little bit. First level I see here, which we've already violated, was at 282. This low and this low, we're below that. So as a technician already, I say, okay, well, we're already below that. Cancel that level out. That's of no use to me right now. The next level, see this little high right here, right through here? That would be my next one that I'd kind of look towards and say, okay, now we're talking about a potential significant support. And what we could see is there's a lot of these pivots right around this general vicinity that do make sense as a potential support. Now, they're not all in a straight line, but what this tells you is that if price continues down today, right, if we continue to see price and it comes into this level here, you know, yes, it could go down a little bit below the highest one, but there's a lot of chop here. Lots of chop means this is an area where there's a lot of buying pressure, or there was, and those a lot of people that miss this run will start to say psych psychologically, they'll say, wow, I, can, I really wanted to buy here and I missed the run up. So now it's back to that level. Maybe I will start to dip my toe in the water in this vicinity. So we're looking at basically 265 to 250. That seems to be a general vicinity on Palo Alto Networks that could be a good opportunity. All right. Uh, next up, we got to look at Solar Edge. Remember, laying off 16% of their workforce. The stock again. By the way, if you look at this daily chart, it was already crushed. If we, in fact, let's go to the weekly, and I want to zoom out on the weekly here. So you can see that this was a $375 stock at one point, going back to 2021, 2022, and early 2023. Massive upside here, right? 350 to 375. It was already down here. Now it's trading down again. Now the question is, where are we going to see technical support today? We go back to the daily chart and we go back to recent levels and again if we flip over to the intraday we see currently it's at basically 70 bucks so we go back to this daily I see a gap fill at 67 and then a double bottom at 64 okay so right off the bat I'm focusing in on the double bottom and the gap fill right here this will be a little bit of technical support down here now if it breaks through that it's in a lot of trouble because again as I showed you on the bigger time frame once you get through and let me just erase this so we can see once you get through these lows, which is that low end range that we just talked about, there's really nothing for years going back of support in this range. So then if it gets through, let's say, 60 bucks and starts trading below 60, it could easily go to 50, could go to 45. You just don't know at that point. All right, next up, Teladoc, guys. Teladoc getting a little bit of a bounce here just over the last little bit pre-market. But look at that drop. Again, telehealth not doing so well. Um, we're trading at around 1640, much like Solar Edge. If we look at the bigger time frame, look at this, guys. 
Look at where this stock was. And by the way, this is one of the biggest holdings in ARKK by Kathy Wood. And again, I'm very curious to hear her take on it. She's written it down before, so I don't understand why she would exit here unless she thinks something materially has changed. But again, we're basically looking at this low area here going back here. That to me looks like where that support could be. So again, we're talking around that 15 to 1550 area as first technical support. And then again, if it breaks there, you could be talking around, um, you know, possibly even lower but just looking at this area here guys you can see these lows right in here 15 to 1550 that's your general technical support on that uh, lastly I do want to do the Nikkei chart I haven't touched on the Nikkei in quite some time just a quick rundown here there's not a whole lot to say other than that you are at a classic double top or close to it um, is the Nikkei overbought the answer is yes um, that but keep in mind the difference here is this high was put in in 1989 so yes, it's back to those levels, but we're in 2024. Think about how many years it took for the Nikkei to go back. Some of you guys have said, and I, and I said this, I said this last in 2022, I thought that the markets wouldn't make a new high for 10 plus years. I still think when we finally get that top, that is going to be the case. I do believe we're gonna be looking at a chart like this or like the Hang Seng or like the EWZ, the Brazilian stock market, and the US will become an unfavorable place versus other countries that are very inexpensive. Speaking of which, look at what the Shanghai Index did last night. Look at what the EWZ did yesterday. Both of them are starting to rally higher, but the U.S., my guess, is going to come down. Remember, we talked about that chart prior. I don't have that chart for you guys today, but basically you have the stock market, the U.S. stock market up here. Brazil and China are down here. My guess is, again, they meet somewhere in the middle over the coming month to year or so. All right, just quick back to center screen, guys, real quick here. Um, we're going to take a quick a uh, 30 second break to thank I Trust Capital for being an amazing sponsor. They are awesome. Check them out, guys. The link's just below. Take it away. Do you have an existing IRA or retirement account? I Trust allows you to buy and sell crypto, gold, and silver all right within your IRA. And the best part is they make it simple. All you have to do is transfer your preferable amount of USD through I Trust and then invest that into crypto or precious metals on the platform. To get access, use the link below to find out more about investing through iTrust Cap. All right, guys, we are back. Let's rock and roll right to Bitcoin. Bitcoin, again, was putting in a little bullish consolidation over the last few days. It started to break down. Now, for me, the kicker here, right, is that there's a chance, guys, that if the stock market continues to sell, and I do think there's a coordination here with Bitcoin starting to stall out here, there's the risk asset effect. And if you start to see NVIDIA come down and you see Palo Alto Networks crumbling today, it does put pressure not just on Bitcoin in the short term, but it also puts more pressure on all coins now maybe not ethereum right ethereum maybe the etf keeps it up that's one's been very very strong but again keep an eye on this if we really get a daily close and i would say right here this previous low right in this mix right so let me draw that in right here if we get a daily close back below, let's say 51, it opens the door to retest 49, and 49 is that big level. The 49 level is so big because that was the previous high when the spot ETF came. So essentially, again, like I said yesterday, anything in here is probably okay, but if just on a micro basis, you wanna see it obviously hold 50. If we do have daily closes below 49, that's the warning sign for a bigger corrective move on Bitcoin. All right, next up, guys, let's take a look at some other cryptos out there. I try to look at a couple every single day. Look at Solana. Solana, again, guys, I love technical trend lines because it tells you so much. Here's a line going back to October of 2023. Look at how we just kept on bouncing off the line, right? It held, it held. Then you got the final bull run here, at least of this short-term period. Uh, that was kind of what I would consider a blow-off top right? Blow off tops is where everyone just goes nuts. It kind of squeezes out all the shorts and so forth. Then it came back in, hit, hit, and broke. And what you did was you came right in here, and then you did a retest of the previous line. So remember, if this is support, right? When support breaks, this now becomes resistance, right? And that's the idea. That's the technical thought process behind it. And you can see it playing out right here. So then we bounce down here and we hit it again and it gets rejected. And now you have a new trend line, right? From this low to this low, right through this low. And we've now broken that. Now, again, listen, 
How low does this go? You don't really know. I mean, short term, we have a little bit of technical support right in this range from these highs here. And I apologize, I got a lot of lines on the chart. Let me clean it up for you guys a little bit. But basically what you're looking at is my guess is you'll come here and test this. This will be another big support. And if you're a bull on Solana, you do not want this low to get taken out. That is your low right now. That is your retrace low. You break this low, which is around, I think it's around 77 to 78 bucks. Now you're talking about a bigger correction that could take you back south of 70, maybe even back into the 50s, okay? Um, another chart that has a great trend line like this, guys, and I haven't talked about shorting this one. I am short this one. We are in the money uh, over 10% already, is this Celestia chart. So T-I-A-U-S-D-T. -T. And what we can see here, same kind of thought process, right? You have this move to here right to here, it held, and then you start to hit, hit, and then look at the break, and look at the little bear flag that it made right there underneath, and now it's starting to break down. Key support right here is gonna be around this $15 level. We'll see if that holds. Right now it's at 1770, uh, 1679, so just keeping an eye on that. We'll go over other cryptos in coming videos, but I do wanna get to gold. We gotta talk some gold action here. Gold, guys. This is now the fifth update in a row. Granted, we still aren't even back to technical resistance yet, but again, it is nice to see that gold continues to see money flow. And I've been a big proponent of this, the thought process that gold has been an underinvested asset the, in the institutions and the Federal Reserve banks around the world are just going nuts buying it more and more. And ultimately, once the U.S. stock market sees money flowing out of the big tech names like we've seen, Gold is going to be a recipient of that. Now, listen, eventually Bitcoin is too. I'm a big long-term believer in Bitcoin. It's just, again, it's still a risk asset, so people get panicky in it. It's just the nature of the beast. Now, a lot of you guys watching don't get panicky in it. That's fine. Your view is really long-term. Not everyone is as stone-cold emotionless as you guys are, and that's why you see it as a risk asset go up and down. But with gold, it generally goes up when markets go down, so close to these levels, and I do think I'm still in that camp that we break out of this range in a very short amount of time. One of my favorites here, guys, is the GDX. Haven't covered this in a little bit of time, but the GDX, look at this beautiful wedge pattern. We held this low right here. Now we have to see, it. can we come up to this level? The big level breakout on GDX is going to be when you can get above this line, which is just above $30. You get through that and you confirm this has a lot of upside. Now remember, why have the miners underperformed so much? Great educational piece right here. The miners have underperformed even gold. And again, if you look at the longer term, I mean, gold's close to all-time highs. Miners are way off all-time highs. It's because of inflation, right? So the gold price, yes, it's up, but it hasn't kept pace with inflation. So these gold miners have had to pay people more money. Their equipment costs more. Their, their every, every expense that they've had has gone up because of inflation, but the gold price has not gone up to keep pace with it. Therefore, their earnings have suffered and they have gone down, 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 down. So again, just so a lot of you guys ask me, well, why are the miners underperforming? That is why the miners are underperforming. However, gold breaks out, there will be a catch-up trade in the miners and the miners Miners could be one of the best places to have money over the next 6 to 12 months. Next up, let's quickly take a look here at the oil chart, guys. And by the way, a lot of you guys ask, oh, you didn't go over platinum today, silver, palladium. If there's not much going on, I'm not going to go over them. I try to go over them each once a week. But just understand that I, I only have a limited time, so i got to make sure I get to what I need to talk about. Again, oil here, guys. Right underneath this level, we're still at resistance, which is $79. We break through that. I think you go to 85, this downsloping trend line. If not, and we get rejected and we can't break through, eventually you head back down to $70 per ounce. Now, lastly, we got to touch base on natural gas here. Look at the beauty of this chart, guys. So again, you have a trend line right here, through here, through these lows, and it coordinates right here. You have your lows going back to the 2020 COVID lows and it goes right there. When you have two trend lines that converge and price is oversold as dramatically as natural gas, the concept is there's a higher probability of a bounce. And sure enough, we're seeing a massive bounce here. I mean, this is an incredible bounce just for today, 12%. But if you look at yesterday's lows, it's now probably closing in on 15% off of the lows. But again, beautiful chart. Look at the trend lines. And again, I, I like to say this, guys, is, is always just use logic, right? So everyone thought the world was ending in 2020 when COVID was at its peak, right? I mean, you know, literally Ackman was on TV saying, hey, the world's ending. This is crazy. That was the, the low of the market. We're back to those levels. Does that logically make sense? Now, yeah, you could say more supply. Oh, the, the U.S. government has kind of kicked out, you know, not allowed exports. It doesn't matter. It's like, is the world really ending? The answer is no. Even if we go into a recession, the world's not ending. It's not ending. 
So you're going to get a technical bounce here. There'll be short covering. There'll be all that stuff. Now, is this going back to five dollars per per you know per per metric? No, probably not in the near term. Down the line, I'm sure it will. But the point is, there's trading opportunities, and that's what I do. I'm a swing trader. For those of you that think I'm a long-term investor, yeah, I mean I have my long-term views, but I'm really a swing trader. All right, back to the center screen, guys. Here, in fact, follow me right over here. I got to get my ball out here to end the game plan. But as always, guys, you guys rock, and I appreciate your support and your comments just continue to be amazing and I, I love I love hearing it I do honestly guys it drives me to want to do giveaways like this wheel it drives me to just want to be better and better in my analysis and my teachings and I really do appreciate that so on that note let's try not to make myself a fool here we're going to try to spin this ball as we exit let's see what we can do <laughs> that's not that great have a good one guys take care